Hi, my name is Jenny Tishy. I'm a nutritionist and the best-selling author of this cookery book, The Modern Multi-Cooker Cookbook. It's 101 recipes for your Instant Pot. And today we're going to be cooking one recipe from that book. It's the tomato and pancetta pasta dish. So, here's an Instant Pot. This is my pressure cooker, which is an electric pressure cooker but does so much more. I'm going to press the sauté button, which is going to heat the element up and the pot up. I've got about Hmm, a teaspoonful, but I'm going to add a little bit more. So about a tablespoonful of extra virgin olive oil. That sound tells me that it's heating up nicely. Uh, whilst that's heating up, I am going to chop my onion. And so that is, it doesn't have to be chef-like. It can be just perfect in the way that imperfect is perfect in my world. Uh, so you'll notice I don't tend to chop things like a chef, in fact, I tend to chop things, I, I, I'm going to say a mum, but that's underplaying mums, isn't it? Um, but I find that as long as it's chopped up, it will cook beautifully in here, and if you have any um, picky palates at home, they do find it quite hard to even find the, the uh, onion, let alone complain about it once it's been cooked up in the pasta dish. So, chop the onion. Um, and then we're going to pop the onion, the chopped onion, into the pot in that oil which is now heated up. Um, and we're going to add at the same time some bacon or pancetta or lardons, whatever you like to call them. But chopped up bacon, you can hear that's nice and warm there, so we're going to add that in. And you can see quite big bits of onion, but it's all good because it cooks down really nicely in here. And that's one of the things I love about my instant pot. You really can merge lots of different things, lots of different veggies and people can't necessarily pick them out in the plane. Uh, so, in goes the pancetta or lardons or chopped bacon, whichever you fancy. And we're just gonna saute that nicely right there. So whilst that's cooking away, um, I've got two lovely plump cloves of garlic and I'm going to just chop those down as well. Now, you're probably seeing this as a sort of a, a, a sort of very standard start to any kind of dish. I do use a lot of onion and garlic in my dishes. Um, both from a nutritional perspective and a flavour perspective. Obviously cooking them down makes them nice and sweet, um, but they're both they're really good for, for liver health and digestive health. Um, and as you may or may not know, um, I'm a bit of a fan of looking after the gut first. And so a lot of my recipes you'll find are very, very gut friendly. Um, this one in particular is, is gluten free and I'll discuss why and what we have going on there in a moment. Um, so a lovely plump clove of garlic, and I'm going to do another one actually, because I'm quite a fan of using garlic, I think it gives great flavour, and like I say, lots of sort of nutritional value as well. Antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, and good for other parts of the body too. So I'm just going to take the skin off there, here that's cooking away nicely in there, and the smell is incredible. Right, so we've got our garlic. I'm just going to chop the second clove and then we'll get that a little bit smaller. And then we can chop up our project. Okay, so we'll just go. This might look a little. No, I'm going to. It's not even looking chefy. It's not. I'm just going to go over and just make it a little bit smaller so you don't get great big clumps of garlic in your pasta dish. Um, right, so then we're going to pop the garlic in next. And that's going to add to that beautiful aroma we've got going on. So two cloves of garlic, in they go. And then a courgette. Seasonal right now. Um, if you're not somewhere where they are in season, then you could use another green vegetable. You might even want to use a bit of aubergine. Um, you could put some frozen peas in there. It's not going to matter. It's going to taste great. So pop the courgette in, two. And we're just going to saute all that up. And then we're going to start thinking about the extra flavour. That's a little bit of salt. I do find with the Instant Pot recipes, you can actually be quite generous with adding a little bit of salt. Um, and the way that the pressure cooking works is the dishes just come out flavoursome, um, but not overly salty. So one of the ingredients I love to use is um, tamari. Now this is a gluten-free soy sauce. Some people aren't really sure what it is, but you can get it in any supermarket. It doesn't have to be this brand. Um, but we're going to put a, a good glug of that in, about a tablespoon of that in. Um, and then we've got some passata and we've got some brown rice fusilli. Now this is a gluten-free pasta, it's quite small. Um, I love using gluten-free pasta because I think for, for lots of people it's much, much health, healthier on the gut, much simpler to digest. 
Um, this is quite small, so it cooks really quickly, and it cooks as part of the whole sauce. So you get this great, great tasting dish, but it's also a really good texture. Um, and we're just going to use some stock. So you see there's quite a lot of liquid, perhaps more liquid than you would imagine cooking a pasta in if you were cooking it on its own. But we're going to be putting it all in the pot together. So let's have a little check in and see how we're doing here. So we've got onion, garlic, courgette, lardons. We've put in our little bit of soy sauce, tamari. And we're just going to make that uh, cook down a little bit more so that those onions get beautifully sweet. And then we can add in our pasta and our passata and our vegetable stock. And at the end of this, this pressure cooker basically is going to cook really, really quickly, much quicker than we would be cooking this on the hob. And of course, we're not cooking the sauce separately, which is why I absolutely love this way of cooking. Whilst it's cooking, it means I can go off and do something completely different, get changed out of my work clothes, for example, talk to my children, and then come back and supper is ready. I would say it's great to have things with it. So for example, maybe a little bit of garnish like basil or to grate a little bit of cheese over the top. It tastes great. So, we're now going to add in our pasta, our fusilli, and there it goes. And then we're going to add in our passata. And passata, all that is, is this crushed or sieved tomato. So it's not tin tomatoes. And I find with the Instant Pot, passata works much, much better. Um, it doesn't tend to stick so much to the bottom. So we're going to put our passata in there. Um, and then the stock. Now what we want to make sure is that the pasta is below the stock level. So we put the stock in there and then it's a good idea if you can give everything a little push down so that the pasta is underneath the level of the liquid. And once that is the case, you can literally just pop the lid on and cook for about a third of the time that the pasta packet tells you to cook for. That's what you set the, the, the pressure cooking for. And then go away and do something else. Uh, so I'm gonna pop it on and we're gonna put that up the vent up so that it's going to pressure seal and then we are cancelling so that we can actually press manual and the manual is on for two minutes so that's about a third of the cooking time that my pasta told me to cook for and we're going to leave it to do its own magic. So now that our pasta is cooked we are going to release the pressure quickly, a QPR, so I'm just going to pull the bag like so, that lets all the steam out. And we just have to wait until that little valve drops down. And that's what we get with the eight liter. And the six liter, it just comes up the fluff when it's at high pressure and then drops down below the surface level. Um, so once that steam is released, we will open the lid, we'll give it a good stir, and then we'll serve it up. We're gonna put some basil over the top and a little bit of cheese, and we're gonna be ready to eat. Yum. So the valve has dropped, I've taken the lid off, and I'm gonna serve up our pasta. Pasta is cooked beautifully, it's just al dente, and you need to serve it right now if you want it al dente. Uh, that's why we do the quick pressure release and you don't leave it any longer, otherwise it will continue to cook and soak up the juices. And that's the case for rice dishes and for pasta dishes. Generally you do a QPR and you eat it straight away. So we'll serve up some of this pasta. We've got the courgette, the onion, the garlic, the lardons or bacon in there. If you wanted to make this a vegetarian dish, just don't put the bacon in there. Maybe use a little bit more of the soy sauce just for that saltiness. So we're going to pop this on here and add a little bit of torn basil, that Mediterranean flavour. And then finally, we're going to grate over a little bit of hard cheese, that lovely sort of saltiness from whatever you fancy. This is pecorino, but it might be parmesan or uh, grana padano, whatever takes your fancy. And that is our delicious pasta dish. Let me just get a fork and taste some, because I'll show you. This is just perfectly al dente. You can see the texture of it. Delicious, absolutely delicious. Yeah.